Ndu retired, OFR, DSSRS, and former Chief Judge of River State, as well as the Chairman Governing Council, River State University. You're welcome, sir. Your Excellency, this is an intimidating audience. It shows the momentum and the occasion we are in now. Let me show my respects to the guest of honor, His Excellency Nyesom Ezemowike, C O N G S S R O S. Life Venture, LLD, Governor of River State. Your Excellency, Her Ladyship, Honorable Justice Suzette Ebrechinia Sonwike, wife of the Governor. Your Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Epalibong Arebanigo, DSSRS, Deputy Governor of River State and Senator elect. Your Excellency, Sassim Nelayi Fubara DSSROS, Governor elect, and Professor Ngozi Otto, Deputy Governor elect of River State. The Right Honorable Speaker of River State House of Assembly, Ikui Owaje Ebani DSSROS. Your Excellency, Dr. Peter Odele, former Governor of River State, and your dear wife, the Honorable Justice Mary Odele, retired Justice of the Supreme Court, and currently the Chairman of the Body of Benches. Your Excellency, I would have liked to go on and on to recognize very other distinguished persons, but because of time, I will Honorable Rec recognize his lordship, the Honorable Justice Simeon Amade, the Chief Judge of River State, and Honorable Justice Him Nacho Obuzo, the President of the Cosmary Court of Appeal. My lords, serving and retired justices and judges of various jurisdictions, the Honorable Frank Ogwo, a former Attorney General of River State. The Honorable Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Professor Zakios Adango. The learned Head of Service and other members of the Executive Council. May I please stand a kid around public lectures and presentation of four books in honor of His Excellency Nelson Ezamowike. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I should not really go into the books or even the lectures. Generally speaking, the contents in the books and the lectures are keyed around identifying what His Excellency Governor Wike has done in the past almost eight years. I want to recall the presentation of the students of the University Hospital that was commissioned yesterday. That is PAMO of Education. Your Excellency, we recall what the presentation was all about. And coupled with that, the host of yesterday, the former governor, Dr. Odeli, drew attention to one important thing. Because we're all gathered here in honor of Governor Wike, 
He said, you should beat your chest and say, you have done what you are sent to do. For the past eight years, you have delivered exceedingly. If I'm to speak up, please, a hand of applause. If I am even to speak about the performance of Governor Wike as the pro-chancellor of River State University, it will take a very long time because at the last convocation ceremony, we reeled out 25 very important and enormous projects executed by Governor Wike in the university. Your Excellency, every person's speech at this winding up goes to show what you have done, and you need not repeat them. I only want to say that you have performed, and in your performance, you have put yourself in the social consciousness of rivers people, Nigeria, and the world. I would like to conclude by saying that in your performance, I want to relate it very briefly to a legend, a myth that was talked about by an English poet in 1834. The poet was Leigh Hunt. He wrote a poem, and that poem was about a Middle Eastern sheikh a, an Arab Muslim saint it's called Abu Ben Adam. Abu Ben Adam. Very briefly, Abu Ben Adam is a mate, woke up from a sleep, and he saw an angel writing in a book of gold. And Abu asked him, What writest thou? And the angel said, The names of those who love the Lord. And Abu said, And is mine there? The angel said, No. And thereafter, before he would disappear, Abu said, Well, if my name is not in the name of those who love the Lord, write mine as one who loves his fellow man. And the angel didn't talk, the angel disappeared. The following morning, the angel appeared. And when he came, he now came with a book showing those whom love of God had blessed. And amongst them, Ibu Ben Adam topped the list. And so, Your Excellency, in what you have done, you have shown that in believing in God, you do so by loving your fellow men. You love both God and men, and you have delivered. <laughs> your Excellency, I want to end these short remarks on that, and also to repeat what Dr. Odili said yesterday that you have performed tremendously well. You should beat your chest and say, I thank God I have delivered. Thank you very much. And again, it deserves a round of word of applause. In believing in God and fellow human beings, His Excellency has performed. And those were the words of the Chairman of today's occasion, Honorable Justice Ichewundu. Once again, let us appreciate him. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Your Excellency, the guest lecturer for today's event is a member of the House of Representatives, and Chairman Committee on Basic Education and Services. Your Excellency, the lecturer for today's event was a former secretary to the Edo State Government, 
and a former head department of Palit School Administrative Studies in the University of Port Harcourt. And for some students who pass through his tutelage, they will attest to the fact that he's quite erudite, particularly when we come to this fair in the area of political economics. Your Excellency, our lecturer for today was a former special advisor to former president of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo. He is an erudite professor of political economics and a former program officer of the Ford Foundation in the United States of America. He is quite active, and Your Excellency, let me inform you, he could be very stubborn. While he was the chairman of the Academic Staff Union of Universities in the University of Port Harcourt, he showed some sign of Aluta must continue. Your Excellency, the guest lecturer today is a recipient of numerous national and international awards and honors. The guest lecturer has authored, co-authored, co-edited over 12 academic books, nine full monographs, 75 referred academic books, 46 books chapter, 20 commentaries, and our guest lecturer today has authored 190 research and conference papers. Your Excellencies, permit me to welcome the erudite professor of political economics, Professor Julius Honvede, MHR. Good evening. Uh, is it good evening? That's why it looks very dark. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Your Excellency, the Governor, and his amiable wife, the Deputy, the incoming Governor, and the Deputy, my leader, Dr. Odili, and the amiable wife, the Chief Judge. Please allow me to stand wisely on the protocol established by the chairman. Let me also say I have uh, eliminated a few chapters from my own text. You have the lecture with you, so you can uh, read the entire text to save time. Also, as I speak, when I talk of leaders, uh, it may not be including all leaders. I have to speak in generic terms or states. We know some states and governors have performed Rivers Gombe, Lagos, for example. So uh, it is indeed a great honor to be invited to deliver this lecture as part of the exit activities to mark the formal end of the administration of Governor Yeson Wike, and of course, the transition to the incoming administration of Governor Sim Fubara. In some sense, on May 29, 2023, the transition will certainly mark the end of an era and the enthronement of another. I'm sure that millions of Nigerians would miss Governor Wike for very many reasons. True, there will be differences between the outgoing and the incoming, but given that the new governor is coming out of the Wike Postgraduate School of Political Strategy, I believe the deliverables will be similar in many ways. There is, and there should be no cause for alarm. Allow me to congratulate both the outgoing and incoming governors of the state for successfully going through the complex, unsteady, uncertain, and sometimes wicked vortex of Nigerian politics. Let me especially acknowledge the tactically strategic politics of the governor, as Governor Wike, that produced his desired results 
in the states and beyond. Uh, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. It demonstrates the work of vision, courage, commitment, and critical thinking. We are all Democrats. At least, that is what we all claim, even while engaging in purely reactionary, opportunistic, and anti-democratic actions. We say we are Democrats. The problem is in our poor understanding of democracy, its principles and implications. We are yet to fully document the very special, peculiar, nation-specific content and context of our democracy and politics that you can't find in social science textbooks. The way we do our politics in Nigeria, 90% of it, you will not find it in any political science book anywhere on earth. This is because the practice of our democracy contains a lot of abracadabra, real magic, or juju. Yes, I mean it, juju. You will be amazed to know how much many politicians waste or spend with native doctors around the country. If you are not careful, strong, focused, and determined, our politics will first bankrupt you, then twist your mind, then chop you to bits. I'm sure you know some who have jumped into the lagoon in Lagos after losing elections. The problem is not really in us, but this is why quite often it is difficult to explain some actions taken by political leaders and gatekeepers in the name of democracy. Our problem is in our history, our upbringing, our education, and our chronic tendency to just replicate or repeat past errors. We are often unwilling to think differently, work differently, and interact differently. We are the victims of received knowledge. And often, what you hear is, hey, don't make wahala here. Don't rock the boat. Don't change the arrangement. I be you know one job, take your time. You hear that often in political meetings when you try to think differently and work differently. Unfortunately, these are the trends and thinking that shape our politics. In all these trends and tendencies, as well as permutations and miscalculations, democracy is the last thing on our minds, though we often claim to be Democrats. If we are Democrats, how do we explain the marginalization or only tenuous involvement of the vast majority in our politics? Yes, we call work hard to call them out to vote during elections, but that's it. How do we explain the humongous sums of money, old currency, new or repainted currency, and forex that we dole out during campaigns and voting? Imagine the agony and humiliation imposed on innocent Nigerians in the name of currency redesign. So far, no one is being held accountable for that pain. How do we explain the truly commercialized security actions during elections? Don't have money during elections for security. Both the one you organize and the formal security and you will lose. How do we explain the marginalization of women, even when they are the majority in the land? In the National Assembly, they are not even up to 5%. How do we explain the very limited concentration on real issues affecting the people during campaigns? Yes, we can dole out insults, plenty of it. In fact, original insults that are hatched on a daily basis are often available in abundance. And I can go on to raise issues on our misplaced, misarranged, mispresented elements of our so-called democratic culture. Even as the elasticity of tolerance in our country is almost endless, 
people are beginning to regard the unusual conditions as normal, even with coping and adjustment mechanisms. If we want to tell ourselves the truth, we should be thinking and working differently. Unfortunately, hunger, grinding poverty, and very limited opportunities have dampened our ability for critical thinking and political action. What we have at the moment is not democracy, but illiberal democracy. I want to repeat that, that what we have now is not democracy. It is illiberal democracy. That democracy, it has all the trappings and coloration of democracy. You know, periodic election, INEC, uh, multi-party system, uh, people campaign, uh, separation of powers, yeah. All those things are there. That's all the trappings, beautiful. But beneath that is a lot of closed democratic spaces, extra legal deployment of power, authoritarian tendencies, and even extra legal shortcuts to power. That's why you can do two primaries in the same election, the same political party, and you are in office against the electoral law. Yes, you can whitewash it, call it beautiful names. But a legendary fella once said, dirty mouth cannot talk clean thing. I took time to look at the functions of political parties. Let me skip that part. But the truth of the matter is that if you ask yourselves, are these political parties behaving like political parties? Read Robert Dahl. You can Google his online you will see the functions of political parties. There's no political party in Nigeria that is performing half of those functions. And what you find is that you will be hearing we are the owners and founders of the party. How can somebody own a political party which should belong to the people? You will hear, quote, oh, those criticizing us are children. They were little when we were running the party. I do not even want to talk about gatekeepers. Those that ensure you never see or meet the leaders and that issues never get to the table for discussion. Try getting a simple document from any of the party national headquarters you will meet a wall of apathy, chronic red tape, corruption and incompetence. Public education, well, maybe on TV, but as far as I know, it is not a project for any party in Nigeria to educate the public about anything, including when they want to repaint the currency. They don't talk to you. They only come out when it is election time. Yet, they are supposed to organize the best minds for presentation in elections. They're supposed to train new leaders. They're supposed to have project priorities, what you call your slate or platform, made known to the people. The majority of party members do not even have the party constitution. And the truth is, we are all Democrats. The way the parties treat each other, and the leaders treat each other. The language they use on each other. You would think they are mortal enemies. They are no longer Nigerians. They are from space. There is no attempt to engage in political debate. Some even avoid debates. Debates to come and tell Nigerians who you are, where you have been, where you are coming from, where you want to go, how you want to do it, what you want to do. They dodge. What kind of people are these ones? Well, let me go. Ordinarily, a democratic country should work on the domestication and institutionalization of democratic tenets. It should, after a decade or so, begin to see the result of its journey 
away from dictatorship to inclusive participation of the people, opening of democratic spaces, training and presentation of new leaders, and alternative discourses on social justice, gender, and environmental rights and the rule of law. This will enhance the move towards democratization. That word, democratization, is not even in our discourse. Yet, that is the only way you measure if your democracy is growing, maturing, surviving, efficient, and effective. This democratization gives the people, their communities and constituencies, priorities in the processes of growth and development. Where this is not the case, we cannot talk about substantial progress. And this is where leadership comes into the question. True or genuine leaders must show pride, energy, confidence, and courage at all times. They must have compassion, knowledge, competence, integrity, and a high capacity to engage friends and foe. True leaders must have a grasp of their historical realities and an appreciation of, of the content of political engagements as they strive to reposition the social formation. But if your goal is not to reposition the social formation, you can find enemies everywhere. You can blame your problem on previous leaders. You can decide to look for enemies where they don't exist to distract the people. But today, in this country, there are just too many incompetent, wicked, uncaring, visionless, opportunistic, inefficient, demonic, and diabolical persons in positions of authority and decision making. Everywhere. You wonder how they got there, what they are doing there. Nothing. They're not interested in the progress of the country. It's shortcuts. Shortcuts to everything. You don't bribe them, you get nothing. Whether it is passport you want, you want to get your tax certificate, anything you want. Driver's license, they frustrate the hell out of you. And they are leaders. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, tell me, how can we explain 20 million children out of school in a country where there is no war? Dilapidated schools, primary schools with no toilets or playgrounds, with six-year-olds, Classrooms with no furniture, empty libraries and laboratories. This is not storytelling by former chairman of ASU. I'm chairman of basic education. I go around the country and I see these schools. And yet they collect billions every year from UBEC. So how do we understand why many states refuse to pay counterpart funds to even collect their allocation from UBEC? The money is there pay counterpart and collect everything they want. How do we explain horrible health facilities, non-functioning primary health care centers dotted all over the rural areas? Even the hospitals are no longer consulting clinics. You remember consulting clinic was an element in the cool speech of one man. What about budget in discipline? grossly misplaced priorities and roads that are death traps. This is a country where all kinds of animals cut away hundreds of millions of naira, monkeys, snakes, termites, catfish, worms, even spirits. You know, willy-willy. They accuse them of the money is missing and it was taken away by monkeys or snakes. Millions. And you know how heavy a million or ten million can be. These are hundreds of millions. 
and nothing happens. Another group of people in this country imported clearly contaminated fuel and destroyed many private vehicles. No one has been held accountable or sanctioned. We set up rail lines and bandits control how we use them. We cannot even supply power to our people. And millions suffer all sorts of humiliations and pains from power cuts. Water does not flow where it should flow. We sink our boreholes, arrange our private security, fence our homes like maximum security prisons, invest heavily in bulletproof vehicles, motion sensors, and electric fences around our homes. An innocent visitor to Nigeria may ask, what exactly is going on here? Let me skip some parts. Well, I hope so far you follow what I'm saying. We have democracy with no democratization. Actually, we have illiberal democracy that cannot lead to democratization. Now, we lack leaders to encourage and mobilize the citizenry to reach the highest points of their productive and creative abilities. Leaders that appear either confused, incompetent, or just unwilling and lacking the courage to take decisive steps to solve just one problem in our nation since political independence. If there's anybody here who can tell me one problem, just one, since 1960, that our leaders have solved, tell me, I will stop the lecture, you will continue. Is it electricity? Is it road? Is it security? Quality education? Health provision? Agriculture and food production? You name it. All these are listed in OA Lawal, Economics for West Africa, which you use for your WIAC exam. The problems are there. Not one has been resolved in this country. We have a power, they say we are 4,000 megawatts. Now, can such leaders produce growth? Yes they can produce growth. Can they produce development? Most unlikely. Can they precipitate situations that will enhance sustainable development? Certainly not. So we are stuck in square one. The elements are not there. It's, this is not to say there are no islands of integrity, islands of progress, islands that, kept, that do the opposite of these problems. But like I said, they are few and scattered. They are not yet brought together to form a notion that will move Nigeria forward. So if we're in this situation, is there any need to talk about sustainable development? I'm not going to bore you with the definition of sustainable development because the United Nations has done that for us through the sustainable development goals. I don't want to ask how many leaders know about the sustainable development goals. And they all carry Android phones. The sustainable development goals are there. They will be watching uh, videos instead of also educating themselves. The World Bank says sustainable development is an organizing principle that aims to provide necessary natural resources and ecosystem services to humans. In other words, development is a process of structural change and institution building that empowers the people and their communities to become productive, confident, and in control of their resources and environment. That is not in Nigeria. Everything beneath your soil and above it that is mineral belongs to people who don't even live in the community. If this is the case, sustainable development must mean the process, mechanisms, policies, programs that enables and empowers communities and constituencies to continuously improve on their environment and existential conditions to assure continuous progress for each member of the organization or the community. If you like, look at our local government system. 
there is a state for the past seven years they have not even pretended that they wanted to conduct local government election. Seven years. The man has one year to go. And the local government councils cannot even remove a dead goat from the highway, much less fixing roads. Many houses of assembly, they even voted against themselves having autonomy. So you know where that instruction came from. National Assembly, uh, you see us on TV. There are people who don't show up there at all. They don't come. Some have never moved one motion. One. Or not, that's too much work. Supported a motion moved by somebody else to just say, Mr. Speaker, I am so-so and so. I rise to second the motion ably moved by my friend. They have never said it. They collect salary. They collect allowances. When you go to federal executive, there are ministers. You forget that they are in the federal cabinet because you have never seen them or heard from them. No media briefing, nothing whatsoever. I saw one recently, and they were calling him minister. I said, ah, minister of what? He said, government. I said, really? In this government? He said, yes. It's okay. But it is the inability to create a system, a monetary system, a sanction system, a corrective system that ensures efficiency, effectiveness, and deliverables to the people. So the problem begins and ends with the kind of leadership we have. If you say your child should not eat outside, feed the child at home. So I am arguing here that our leadership has not done well since 1960 to today, and this has corrupted and contaminated our democratic process, and so we cannot talk of sustainable development. It's not possible. You cannot, I think his lawyers would like to say so, you cannot build something on nothing. How? But what I've said so far is not new to anybody here. In, at one time in this country, states had bursaries for students. They had federal government scholarship. There was even federal loan. If you were in faculty of education, it was automatic scholarship. Today, the story is different. In this same country where we were, the library of the University of Ife was as good as any library anywhere on earth. They could borrow books from you, from other universities. In this same country, no newspaper today is even publishing 250,000 copies. Who will read it? People are no longer reading. 250,000 copies. Publishers have closed down. They are publishing greeting cards and calendar. No longer books. Go to the universities. Courtism, not just courtism are in primary, is in primary schools. Our primary school children are joining courts and killing themselves in the rural areas. Go to any village you want to pay for work. Should not cost you more than twelve thousand, but they charge you thirty-five to forty-five thousand because the extra is to sort the invigilator along with pandedium and pan wine and very cold bottles of beer. So while he's eating and drinking, they are doing uh, expose in the exam hall, and they come out and have eight A's. But well, invite them to pursue me, they will show up. Somebody who's got 320 in jam, dodges pursue me. Don't you know something is wrong somewhere? But let us leave Nigeria alone because that's a big elephant. One person cannot carry it. But one day, we are going to carry that elephant. Let me go to the Yes on Wiki example. Maybe it may help us to throw some light on the lamentations, if you want to call it that. Yes, it is true that Governor Wike is my good friend. It's good to say it off road. It's also true that he was my student at the University of Port Harcourt, and I'm proud of him. And he's very proud to say it anyway. If you were a bad teacher, your former students will see you 
and go the other way. It is equally true that he's not a perfect man. I don't think he was ever perfect, just like me. But who is perfect? Only God is perfect. No human, nobody in this room can claim that he or she is perfect. God is the only one that doesn't make mistakes. Just as I am proud to say that Dr. Peter Odili, the former governor of the state, is my friend and leader. Uh, one time governor, Roti Michi, was also my student, as were many others, including Professor M. A. Adibe. So I've been lucky to produce the kind of people that climb the ladder to the top. However, I watched closely the contributions of Dr. Odili directed at repositioning the state when he was governor. And he achieved a lot. I know I followed Obasanjo to this state and we witnessed incredible interventions war against underdevelopment. If his dream of becoming president of the republic had come to fruition, Nigeria would have been a much better place. And I can say without equivocation that Dr. Odili is not just a good man, but he's also a God-fearing man. In the same vein, the outgoing administration of Yeson Wiki has marked a new departure in transformational leadership, governance, and development in River State. It is when you look at the Wiki example that you begin to see the relevance of courageous, focused, and development-oriented leadership and the impact it can make in the communities and in the lives of citizens. I have walked some of the streets of Port Harcourt with the governor, and I see how people come out to wave at him and greet him. I've also walked one or two streets with some other governors, and people didn't come out. Even those that were paid to come out took the money and did not come out. And he said today was a day of worship, so that's why they are not out. I believe, let me remind us, that wicked did not fall from nowhere. He is a properly trained lawyer with a spouse who is a brilliant lawyer. He was local government council chairman, and by existing accounts, he performed very well. He was chief of staff to the state governor, and we have no account of a lackluster performance. He was minister of state and supervising minister of education. We know the numerous bold innovations he initiated and the laudable achievements in his time. Then he became governor of Edo State. No, five minutes is not enough to talk about this part of this talk. Make it ten, please. Then he became governor of River State. Those that refused to pay attention to him within and beyond the state now took notice, especially when he began to unleash novel programs and policies, engage chronic conservative and reactionary elements within and beyond the state, and lay a foundation for the new river state. I truly believe that Wicke's assumption of power in river state marked a whole new era of local politics, deployment of power, and the reorganization of political spaces. The state, river state became a mecca as politicians, irrespective of party and status, began to see the state in new light and the hope of survival and influence. I have seen them here. All parties, all former governors, coming to see the governor of River State. You should clap for yourselves. They, I, mean, I come from a state. They don't go there like that. Something is happening here. And some people pretend it is not happening. As well, many found in Wiki a source of strength 
and support to challenge political oppression, marginalization, and injustice. In some way, we can give voice to the voiceless, power to the weak, platform to the downtrodden, and dignity to the despised. <laughs> Wicked's era also saw a massive expansion in the investment climate in the state, witness the new businesses, institutions, and infrastructural outlook. These investments lead to job creation and substantial improvement in the internally generated revenue. Without doubt, this era equally marked a new epoch in the place of river states in national discourses and political permutations. We could brought in a new phase of domestic and international appreciation of the location of the state in economic calculations. I personally cannot believe that this is the same rivers, the same city and state, because I lived in Portacourt for many years. And you don't have to like Wiki to acknowledge this, that it is a completely new city. Beyond Port Harcourt, Wiki has shown that rural people also deserve to feel the touch of governance, especially in terms of linking local communities to the center of power in Port Harcourt. Like a man in a hurry to finish an assignment, he unleashed massive interventions, often at great cost, on practically every sector, health, education, administration of justice, and rural development. What has been done can be maintained by the new Fubara administration, and what he has not done will be the responsibility of Governor Fubara and his team. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to this paragraph, because it means a lot to me. The sort of battle that Governor Wike fought very recently on behalf of the entire southern Nigeria and by implication the entire country, who has fought such a fight in our recent history? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Think of all the big men with big abada and long cards. Which of them has fought such a fight recently? We are not talking of meaningless coup brokers or sectional ethnic-based opposition or protests, useful as they may be. We are talking about a very serious, organized, focused, practical, and surgically executed actions on the political terrain of Nigeria without arms or protests. They didn't mobilize students like we used to do. No. But the actions were surgically delivered. I may be wrong, though I doubt it, when I say that no one person has ever challenged the assumed hegemony of a major political party, its leaders, the custodians of power, and many that do not really give a damn about the unity and future of Nigeria in the way that we did. Many governors in the South-South betrayed him. Some bowed mounted him. Some attacked him and called him names. Yet others said it was a pursuit of personal ambition and sour grapes. The fact is that Wike is a great man, a warrior, a leader, strategic calculator, and he is the hero of our time. Any person who thinks this is a lie, or I'm just heaping praises on him, can challenge me here or on the pages of any paper, I will reply. He spoke the truth to power. That's what made him uncomfortable. Doesn't care who you are. You may be the president, or you may be a party chairman in a state. He will tell you the truth the way it is. And he's not seeking for your approval. He's saying it, not in hiding. In fact, he will call all the TVs and say it to them. This is wrong and I'm going to fight it. He spoke the truth to power. He took a clear stand on the political sands of time and challenged his opponents to a duel. He came out vindicated and victorious. I remember 
when he said uh, one man, a big man, took a big bribe in Lagos. And he said, deny it. And I will tell you the day, the hour, where the money came from, how you collected it. They made the challenge. Him. We are still waiting for the challenge. There are even pro bono lawyers in Nigeria that will take. This is because he does his research. And that's what a leader should do. Before you talk, know what you are talking about. That is how a leader should act. Say what you like. I think many postgraduate dissertations in the social sciences will come out of Wiki's direct engagement with political party power in Nigeria. As the saying goes, when the come comes to become, we shall know who is who. Today, we know who is who. Now, what were the weapons? What gave him this power, the audacity of courage to engage in this transformation within and beyond and engage the system? This is not exhaustive, but I will say one, undiluted commitment to the growth and development of River State. I don't need to tell you stories about that. Willingness to tap talents from all over the nation and globally. Doesn't matter whether you are from River State, if you have a talent you can use to grow the state, it would attract you here. That is the way a leader should be. Belief in the necessity for transformation. You can't keep whitewashing, paint it every year and think you are making a change. Transform the system. Understanding Nigerian politics and history. Understanding the main actors in the state and national politics. If you do not know your enemy, you do not know your territory, you cannot change it, you cannot know where the trouble is coming from. Willingness to fight, and if necessary, take no prisoners. Any general must recognize that. Willingness to fight, and if necessary, take no prisoners. Courage to take a stand, defend his position, recruit support, and show deliverables. An understanding of the fact that political fighting does not mean abandonment of growth and development within the state. Effective control of the party, civil and public service, and political processes in the state. Yeah, if you don't like that, try it and see the results you will get. Unpreparedness to ignore political enemies, opportunists, double-faced elements, and disloyal friends. Courage in stating his convictions and exposing political rascality and debauchery, no matter whose horse is God. Preparedness to deploy funds to holistic development, not minding the size to address pressing problems. And I think somebody referred to it earlier ago. And if I may add, and in his own words, taking my course in political in theory of state at the University of Portacourt, where he gained useful insights into the Gramscian theory of state and methods of struggle, the war of movement, the war of position, and underground warfare that has empowered him to understand analyze, interpret, and strategize against his opponents and come out victorious. Let me not drag this lecture for too long. The point I'm making is that where democracy and its rules are not respected, where leadership lacks courage and vision, it cannot provide sustainable development. In fact, it will remain nothing but motion in a barber's chair. A lot of motion, but no progress. Um, many young people will not know that chair. In the barber's shop in those days, when you sit on it, it can go this way. So the barber stays in just one place. Does he have to come here? Come here. So there's a lot of movement on that chair, but it doesn't move from where it is. 
motion without progress. I believe that the current situation in this country requires a major rethink and serious ideological and philosophical repositioning. The very hard and patriotic efforts of the few that represents islands of integrity and positive leadership, like we see in River State, we most times be frustrated and encouraged to join the system. Unless you have that inner strength in you to resist temptation, political temptation. As well, the identity of the patriots and progressives will not be overshadowed by those with fake purchased and stolen identities. They call themselves chiefs when they are not. Many are apostles and bishops, self-proclaimed, doctors, professors with small p. No, the professors with a small p, they are professors with a capital P. The professor with a small p is a political professor. You won't find him in the library. You won't even find him on Google. Yet, it's a professor. Then there are professors with a capital P, like uh, Adibi. Put him on Google and you'll be satisfied that yes. And all sorts of titles that mean little in the field of battle. Is it not interesting that those we call the lion, the tiger, elephant, serpent, viper, scorpion, are the first to flee at the first signs of conflict. When a legend is coming, they relocate their families abroad. They have a waiting ticket and a booking on a private jet. That will tell you that their hearts are not in the system. But they have big political names. Don't let those names frighten you. It is all imagined and invented identities. This is why it is easy for so-called leaders to appropriate the voices of the people and use the same to seek for contracts, appointments, and access to power. In conclusion, what must be done? We cannot give up on Nigeria. The opportunities that abound in Nigeria do not exist elsewhere. If we cannot provide power, water, good health services, good roads, security, seamless banking services, we have no grounds to call ourselves leaders. These are basic things. Basic human existence requires this. It is, is it not a shame to be leading a group of frustrated, hungry, sickly, half-educated, unemployed people that lack faith in the leadership and society? You are a leader, but look at the people behind you. They can't even walk. People that think that the national anthem is a joke when you say sing the national anthem. Some of them will sing the old anthem. We must therefore generate and sustain a national conversation for the community level to the national level on critical issues of leadership, followership, governance, restructuring, constitutionalism, growth and development. We must not ignore the critical issues of technology, women, the youth, rural areas, and the environment, and how to be the conversation on new policies with emphasis on liberation, autonomy, and production. We must generate the capacity to reject and condemn bad leaders while recognizing those that have records of performance and commitment over time. River State is very fortunate to have a leader like yes on Wiki at this critical time in history. I come from a state, so I know what I'm talking about. Like him or not, he has repositioned the state significantly. He has set new standards for measuring performance in office. Wiki has given the reverse man and woman and added gates, sense of pride, and the license to demand, very loudly, if necessary, a seat at the decision-making table. Henceforth, no governor in the state
can they go below the bar he has set? And following in his footsteps, the state can only continue, enjoy continued growth and development. I'm happy that uh, Sim is here. So he has his bed made for him. And he knows how to lie on it or not. As he leaves office, Dr. Yeson Wike cannot afford to leave his unfinished business. If he had become president of the Federal Republic, the entire nation would have become a construction site. But yes, that's the truth. Look at what he has done here. And if you, after all, when we were campaigning for Tinubu, Tinubu, we said, well, look at what he did in Lagos. That was 16 years ago. Now, this is just happening. So if it had happened, you know what would have happened in the country? Without doubt, Wiki has initiated a new momentum to protect the interests of southern Nigeria in national political calculations. And he must continue. He must continue on that quest. He has put together a political team that has demonstrated what he could do to big organizations and big men. He must continue to expand, strengthen, and lead that team to focus on salient national issues without ignoring the substructure of society. Finally, all leaders make mistakes, get betrayed, lose touch with old friends. He must spend time to strategize how to mend fences. This can only make him stronger, certainly not weaker. I wish him and River State under St. Fubara an even better experience into the future. I believe that the yet, the best is yet to come for Wiki and River State. Thank you very much for listening and I appreciate the opportunity. And a round innovation for our guest lecturer, Professor Julius Monberry, member, House of Representative. A wonderful lecture delivered. And of course, he has said it, like him or not, yes, Wike has changed the landscape of River States. And in the words of Professor Julius Ihomberry, no governor in River State is allowed to do below what the administration of Yasu Wiki has done. Again, a wonderful round of applause for our guest lecturer. Your Excellency, as part of this inauguration lecture, we have four books to be unveiled. And these four books are a chronicle of the audacious moves and step by the Yasu Wiki administration in the area of infrastructural development, governance, and politics. Your Excellency, at the moment, permit me to welcome the book reviewer. Please welcome with me Professor Emenike Adibe, who has been allotted 20 minutes to help us with the review of the four books. You're welcome, Professor. <laughs> Excellency, the Governor of River State, Dr. Nelson Wike, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of River State, Dr. Mrs. Ifalibo, um, I have to please bear with me. Your Excellency, the First Lady of River State, my dear sister, Honorable Justice Suzette Nelson Wike, Your Excellency, the incoming Governor, Safubara, Your Excellency, the incoming Deputy Governor, Professor Mrs. Odo. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. And please permit me to stand on all existing protocols. I don't do this very well. And when you have to speak after your teacher, that is an enormous responsibility. And I wish to do that with all due respect. And I'm going to say this. Please don't measure me against the standards of Professor Humber. I am glad that he ended the way he ended. He scared me when he started uh, and painted a picture that he and I are all too familiar with. 
everything in Africa is dystopian. And people have made a lot of career out of that. And I kept, and I kept scratching my head and I go, when is he going to turn to River State because this is a totally different story. And he did. I see the glass as half full. A lot of people see them half empty. So please permit me if I'm a little bit too optimistic because I've seen a lot of that. Exactly eight years ago, I had the privilege of being here for the first gubernatorial inauguration lecture for Dr. Wike. Eight years ago, many of you were here. It was a very different time. We weren't sure that the inauguration would even hold. He refers to, I think he says mightily about what uh, Dr. Humber said, the wickedness of our politics. I think that makes today's event even more important. Because you look back at eight years ago where we were, and look at where we are today, it's an enormous time gap. A lot has happened here. What we are witnessing today is not an accident. It took a lot of time, effort, skill set. And the books that we have here, four of them, did justice to just that. There are four of them, and I'm going to review them, not individually, but in some ways, uh, take thematic issues uh, that connect them. The first is by Dr. Ebesi Beredugo. 648 pages, transformative speeches of Governor Yes Wike. The second is leadership books share a common denominator, and that is a desire to provide a verifiable record of transformative leadership of Governor Yes Wike. The first of these books by Dr. Beredugo begins with a primer by way of a living testimony by Dr. Peter Odele. I have a quote here that I really want to set because it gives us the background that will follow. Here is Dr. Odele. Governor Wike is a living testimony of the veracity of the statement that when preparedness and opportunity converge, the outcome is bound to be a success. This book has, in fact, about 190 selected speeches uh, of Dr. Wicke from 2015 to 2023. I will highlight about two of those speeches because they speak to the event of today, and that is leadership. The first of those speeches was at the first inaugural in 2015, May 29, Elikaya Stadium. Many of you were there. That context is especially useful today. In it, Governor Wicke said, and I quote, now that we have become victorious and have arrived at the homeward end of a beautiful journey, it is time to work to erect landmarks of progress and prosperity. Now is the time for us to rebuild, to rebuild our state, to rebuild our educational and health institutions, to rebuild our occupations, and to rebuild our infrastructure. It is time to provide new opportunities to touch our people's lives and restore hope. Eight years ago, 2015, fast forward today, he delivered. The second speech that I chose to highlight is the one he gave at the South South and Southeast Governors Forum on the 27th of September, 2017. I quote, today, the two regions, that is Southeast and South South, are the most politically and create jobs for our team youths. From a geostrategic economic perspective, therefore, there is an urgent need to establish and link our cities with railways and superhighways to stimulate economic growth and social progress across our two regions. 2017. Pastor Humber referred to Lagos, Western Nigeria, in some ways when he was born, that was how we referred to that part of the world. We remember what Awolowo did there. 
they still remember him. Where is the South South and the South East? And the reason I highlight this is because you all saw what happened in the presidential primaries. We only ourselves. We continue to do that. What Dr. Wicke fought for was for harmonization. From Port Harcourt to Abba is 35 minutes drive. From my home to my office in Chicago, I drive for nearly an hour. My brother here, Chitro, in Atlanta, knows exactly what I'm talking about. That commute is nothing to us. I could leave home at 1 a.m. I'll be in my office easily by 1.30 a.m. if I want. I could leave by noon. I'll be there. Because the roads are there. But Taco Taba is impossible. And why is that? These are two commercial nerve centers in what used to be eastern Nigeria. How about Onisha? You can go from Owori to Onisha in 45 minutes. It's a trip that should not take you anything more than 25 minutes. So, he is talking about us as a people to come together. It didn't work out, but it will work out. The reason I selected these two speeches from the compendium is because they highlight the conceptual and strategic approach of the weaker administration. What you saw these past eight years was not an accident, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'm a brother, I'm a friend, I'm biased. But I let the work speak for themselves. It is a product instead of a well thought out governance framework that is underpinned by a philosophical commitment to economic empowerment, social justice, and a sense of community. Vision is translated into deliverables to sustain diligence and bridge building. In other words, I wanted to understand that you are looking at a man who walked his butt off, his butt off as we say in the US. He worked so hard every single day to make these things happen. They did not happen by accident. So, what are these deliverables? Omu Chukwe Anumam has 58 contributors who examine weakest accomplishments in the health sector, sports, security, human capital development, administration of justice, gender equity. In chapter 10, and I want to highlight that because it kind of captures a lot of what was said here, Professor Chitro Oluwene writes that the overall vision of Governor Yeson Wike for the health sector of River State was to improve the health facilities and personnel in River State and make the state the hub of medical tourism in Nigeria and Africa. I want you to think about that. If River State became the hub of medical tourism, just think of how much would be generated here to power even more development. To make this happen, therefore, the weaker administration embarked upon medical manpower development of the Lepamo University, Braithwaite Memorial Hospital was upgraded to University Teaching Hospital, new general hospitals were built and rehabilitated throughout the state, the specialist hospital uh, that were here, mother and child, Peter the Lake Cancer Center. These are tremendous achievements. No one thought this was possible. And that is what makes this so important. Where is the money coming from? And yet, it happened. In the educational sector, Umumana Akaka provide us with the logic, theory, and evidence of Governor Wike's leadership in this critical area of society. I'm an educator, so I really take that uh, to heart. What happened there, according to a chapter by Charles Kennedy, is unbelievable. He called it sustainable education development through infrastructure provisions in River State. As evidence, Kennedy points provides data that show the sheer scale of investment in this sector across all levels. Early childhood and elementary education, secondary vocational education, and tertiary education. I was especially impressed by the data he presented that showed that between 2015 and 2020, the Wicca administration constructed 370 new schools, 
370 and renovated 223 schools and equipped 137 schools with ICT. That is unbelievable. Among all the other things, are you surprised? I'm not. He was Minister of Education and one of the unsung things that happened in this country, and I want you all to take that very seriously, was the focus on Amajiri children, Fulani kids who for millennia have not had formal education. And there are many. As Professor Humber mentioned here, we lead the world in the number of young children who should be in schools but are not in schools. He built schools for them free of charge across northern Nigeria. He equipped them. He hired teachers for them. And the goal is very simple. Let these kids go to school so they can be good to themselves and useful to the country. They will not be exploited by their leaders to cause trouble. That can be a scene in a very conservative society. In a progressive society, nothing is more revolutionary than that. You empower people, you empower society. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, for doing what you did in the educational sector. My own hope, and it is indeed my sincere hope, that all the children who have benefited from this will remember how they got there. Very often when we all make it, we forgot or forget how we got there. I want all those children today are presidents, they are ministers, they are CEOs, they went to the schools that Awolowo built and gave them free education. And you know what? I've met many of them, they are still very grateful for that. I want our young children today who are benefiting from that, 20 years down the line, to remember I am a wiki student. The fourth and final book for review is titled Years on Wiki Leadership Strategy, Governance, Faculty and Testimonials, edited by Eric Osage. I'm a political scientist, I'm a social scientist, so I'm biased, and I, whenever, whenever I'm biased, I say so. Um, I have a contribution, Julius and I have a contribution in this, so I'm not going to say much about that. But this book offers a deep and powerful insight into the man, Governor Years on Wiki. And above that, it offers theories of leadership written by 13 contributors who know him really well. I've had the privilege of knowing some of them through him. Eric begins the book by saying, listen, this is not an attempt at hagiography. It's not a praise book meant to massage the ego of a politician. It's a very serious endeavor, and I want to say amen to that. The book is not about praising him. It's about looking at what happened. How did he do it? Why did he do it? With that caveat, Jerry Ghana writes, Next to good leadership, Wiki has demonstrated the vital importance of strategic thinking. To ensure good success, Leaders must think through strategic options and then adopt the most suitable for the task at hand. Our own dear brother, Adoki Amese Maka, I hope he's here, identifies the following elements as crucial to wicked success. His tireless and purpose-driven work ethic. True appreciation of the value of trust and sense of gratitude. Anyone who knows Governor Wiki knows exactly what Ms. Mecca said. Work, strong work ethic. Fidelity. Mohamed Adoke Bello, a former Attorney General, Minister of Justice, who served with Governor Wiki in the Federal Cabinet under good luck, Jonathan Rice, that Governor Yeson Wiki typifies good leadership qualities such as compassion. Many people don't know that. Reliability. Consistency. Determination, perseverance, and for me, emphasis added, teamwork. I've seen a lot of people around Governor Wiki. When Chito and I come in here as we do, thanks to him, 
It shovels a little bit, but the same people are there. It's a team. From the elders to cabinet members to advisors, it's a team. Sir Fumara, you are part of that team. I hope you continue to build on it. I wish you all the very best. In conclusion, all this, okay, okay, so I'm concluding. These four books ask one question. Who is Yes Owike? What sets him apart from other leaders in our time? How and why was he able to accomplish so much despite all odds? And the odds were many. They answer these questions in very different ways, but they are united in one fact. Yes, on Wike is proof that leadership matters. As Dr. Dele put it in his introduction, and I quote, the Wike administration has surpassed all previous ones in socio-economic and infrastructural development, human resource empowerment, political inclusiveness, gender equality, maintenance of peace, security, and tackling environmental pollution. River State has proudly regained its place in national political prominence and relevance. Say amen to that because they are very religious people. Generations of students of political economy, government, and public policy the world over will find in these books epistemological and methodological insights that will help advance our knowledge of governance and polities in very complex milieus such as ours. In my view, there are no more complex times than the ones in which we now live. The world is a mess. We need leaders. We need leaders like we did. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much for putting this event together. And if you don't mind my asking, I would like you to give a standing ovation to the governor of River State and the incoming governor of River State who have made all this possible. Thank you very much. And again, shall we appreciate Professor Emenike Adibe. Thank you so much. While we observe the standing ovation for the governor, and the incoming governor of River State. Once again, thank you so much, Professor Adibe. Thank you. Your Excellencies, you may have your seats. Your Excellencies, we're now set for the unveiling of these books. Again, just in the words of Professor Julius Ihonvere, as well as from Professor Emenike Adibe. These books were not written to massage the ego of any politicians. These books were not written to heap praises on anyone. These books are a sincere research of the sagacious endeavor of the Yesawiki administration. Again, according to Professor Emenike Adibe, a while ago, these books are a testimony of what is on ground. And just like Professor Julius Ihonvere said, like him or not, the Yeso Wiki administration has performed. Your Excellency, let me draw your attention to one of these books. And this book is the one that is titled Transformational Speeches of Governor Isawan Yeso Wiki. Some of these speeches dated back seven years ago, and the realities are on us today. Again, we'll be taking an individual unveiling of these books because of their uniqueness and the issue they tricked uniquely, we'll be unveiling them one after the other. Your Excellencies, to do the unveiling of this book, permit me to welcome His Excellency, Permit me to welcome for the unveiling of this book and the presentation of the book, His Excellency, 
former governor of River State, Sir Dr. Peter Otunaya Odili, CON GSSRS. And to join on the on please let's welcome the former governor of River. <laughs> Excellencies, the indomitable, the irrepressible, the dynamo, the man who for the past eight years has matched his words with action, appropriate action. The man who overperformed, he promised and overperformed with his actions. The professors have talked and talked and talked. Professor Julius and our homeboy. Everything you've said, we fully align with, endorse, and support. I'm not sure I'm called up to make a speech, no. With the permission of her royal father, the chairman of the Council of Traditional Rulers, let me say that what we've heard from the two professors who addressed us is a call to action. Our governor hit the ground running eight years ago. And the summary of his tenure is that he kept his words, he fulfilled his promises, he restored the pride of River State. Our traditional rulers are now looking like traditional rulers. Our chiefs and elders and leaders are working with greater pride. Your Excellency, you are a phenomenon. Nobody, nobody can understand how you function. How you and your dear wife organized yourselves to function the way you have functioned that made it possible for you to perform the way you've performed. Phenomenal. We congratulate you. We urge you to work with pride. With a sense of contentment you've done it like we said to you yesterday swagger with contentment and pride walk with your shoulders up because in the history of Nigeria no governor has performed the way you have performed The 
God that made you do what you've done over the past eight years enabled you to function the way you did, strengthened you, and loaded you with the courage to challenge those that could never have been challenged ever before in the history of this country. You not only challenged, you confronted the challenges you met and those that were thrown at you and you prevailed and came out victorious and intact. None of your bones was cracked. That doesn't happen in Africa. You are an example and an inspiration to those coming after you. Our governor elect, will I say, has been your younger brother and friend and clear about the vision you have un unleashed in our society. He has no choice than to follow. See, yes, the shoe may look too big, but with God, nothing is impossible. So feel confident. Feel confident. The book presenters have told you, the professors who reviewed, they have told you that you have no choice where our governor has stopped or is going to stop because he's still working, knowing him until midnight on May 29th, he's still at work. They've told you to make where he stops your takeoff point. And by the special grace of God, that will be your takeoff point. And you have no choice than to take River State to the next level. It is on this note, Your Excellency, I will humbly request that. You know, MCs control situations. My former Chief Justice, Chief Judge of the State, the Chairman of the Vocation, said the MCs take over. He had just told me that he has a lineup of things to do. But I want to end on the note Your Excellency, words cannot describe your success. You hit the ground on the 29th of May 2015. No minute of your tenure was wasted in meaningless things. Every minute of your time was deployed for the good of our state. No part of this state did not feel the impact of your governance. So go home with your wife and prepare for what God has prepared for you. I have no doubt that God has not finished with you. Rivers people are waiting for you waiting for you to drag Sim and his team to the next level. And we are waiting as elders for greater days for River State, for Nigeria to know that God did not make a mistake in constructing the map of Nigeria. The weight of Nigeria is sitting on River State. 
And because God does not make mistakes, it is the owner of the land that carries the weight of the land. River State is carrying the weight of Nigeria because God destined this state to be the strength of Nigeria and to be the heart of Nigeria and the best in Nigeria should happen from River State. That is the challenge before all of you. May God bless you and thank you for your attention. Do you believe, oh, I believe? Do you believe, oh, yes, I believe? I believe to join His Excellency, to join His Excellency Dr. Peter Obi, Dr. Peter Odili, in unveiling this book, please welcome His Excellency, the Executive Governor of River State, is one yes, we came. Please, let's also welcome Our Excellency, Honorable Justice Eberichi Suzette in Yesonwike. Let's welcome Our Excellency, Dr. Mrs. Ipalibo Hari Barnigo. And also, we welcome the Governor elect of River State, Sir Similae Fubara, the Deputy Governor elect, Professor Mrs. Ngonsi Odu. And also, the Speaker of the River State Art of Assembly, Right Honorable Ikunya Waji Bani, as well as Honorable Justice Incheundu, kindly come on the floor, please. And also, please, I would like to welcome, also to join in unveiling the book, Our Excellency, Honorable Justice Mary Odili, Justice of the Supreme Court, retired. The Chief Justice of the State is as well to join in unveiling this book, Honorable Justice Incheundu, retired. OFR, please kindly join in unveiling this book. Thank you so much. Sir. Your Excellencies, our royal fathers, my dear brothers and sisters and friends of River State, on behalf of all those who have contributed to the works that we are going to unveil now, and to the glory of God, to the glory of God, we unveil all these books. And here is a formal unveiling of the book, Education, Sustainable Development, Leadership, Governance, and Sustainable Development in Nigeria, Transformational Speeches of Governor Yeson Wike, Leadership Strategy, Governance of Yeson Wike. And now we have copies of the books right now. Your Excellencies, you are part of history as this unique research, this unique book is now being unveiled for the public. Four of them right now, Educational Sustainable Development, Essays in Honor of His Excellency, Leadership Sustainable and Leadership Governance and Sustainable Development in Nigeria, Transformational Speeches of Governor Yeso Ezewanwike, and yes, on weekly leadership strategy and governance. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished personalities, we present to you these four unique books in honor of our governor, His Excellency Ezewa Yeson Wike. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your Excellencies. Your Excellencies.
overtaking a remark by the governor of River State, the SM AC1 Week GSSRS Life Venture. Thank you, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, my dear wife, Your Excellency, the former governor, and your dear wife, Your Excellency, the deputy governor, the governor elect, and the deputy governor elect, the right to have a speaker, my lord, the chief judge, and the president of Customary Court of Appeal, the chairman of today's occasion. The chairman of River State Traditional Lands Council and members of their council, the erudite lecturer, my lecturer, Professor Gilles Humbery, and the erudite book reviewers, Professor Clement Avery Adibe, leaders of our state. Distinguished Senator John Mbata and other members of the National Assembly that are here, my party chairman, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, let me, on behalf of my wife, thank the organizers of this program, particularly the, those of them that have to work on these books. I sincerely appreciate and thank them for their hard work and for all the echoes that have been poured on us and administration. I want to thank the elder lecturer, of course, I said when they came to me who was going to be the lecturer. I said, take number one, who is there, I don't need to debate about it. And when they say who was going to be the reviewer, I said, don't make a mistake. Take it by one, two. We are all confident that we are we pass through the tutelage of Professor Julius in Hombere. And this is what you will talk about as people who have what to say, courageous people. Uh, Julius is no longer strong. In those days, when Julius Ehomere was Julius Ehomere, I know that the whole, the whole would have been vibrating by now. When it was a uh, asu, it's like Nigeria should come down. But the reality has also dawned on him that theory is also different from uh, practice. <laughs> and so he cannot put the two together. Frankly speaking, that Wiki has done well, Wiki has not done well. Wiki has performed beyond expectation. First of all, we thank God Almighty. But it is the support of our people that has made it work this way. If you are doing something and you look around nowhere to get advice, Nobody to call you to tell you certain things you should take into consideration. It will be difficult. If reverse people were not in support of bad decision, we wouldn't have been encouraged to do what we have done. And so I say to all of you, our leaders, reverse people, that I appreciate every support you have given to us since 2015. It has not been easy, like they said, but like Dr. Peter Lee said, with God, everything is possible. But once you have God first, you don't need to worry. Yes, challenges will come, but if you are focused and committed, and with God on your side, you'll be able to surmount those uh, challenges. One of the things that I can say, and I'll continue to say it, that guided me was before I was sworn in as governor of River State in 2015. I will not forget that, uh, which is what I have also told my successor. Dr. Peter Lee wrote out certain things 
I give to me that this should be my guide that he has made his own mistakes and he doesn't want me to make those uh, mistakes and I took that seriously and this is what has led me or led us to where we are today so Dr. Peter, I sincerely thank you and your wife On Saturday, I will make my validatory speech. So just today is just to thank everybody and say that the support you have given to me, give more to my successor. Because if he fails, all of us have uh, failed. So that, uh, that same support, if not more than, I, I have that belief that the governor elect and the deputy governor elect will do very, very well. But People should also understand no two persons can be the same. No two persons can be the same. Don't compare that the way I relate with you should be the way the incoming administration must relate with you. No. We have different styles. But what's important is being able to deliver what will make our people to be happy. Yes, I can see that with you have some drinks. You don't expect that from the governor elect that he's this person that will call you, where are you? Let's go out for a drink. Don't expect that. He's not also, you know, he's an accountant. Accountants are very conservative. They don't spend money anyhow. They will spend money when they do it to be useful. We, we can spend money just because we want to spend the uh, money. So don't rate, don't rate us the same. But he's a very good person, I can tell you. He's a very good person. He's somebody you can rely on. His yes is yes. That I can tell you. When people were struggling to be governor, he never one day came to me that said, I'm interested. He never one day. Only those who don't have the interest of the state were those masquerading themselves running around. Those whom I know they would, that will sell the state the next day. And I told God, they have all left now. I don't know where they are living. They've all left. But those who love the state, it doesn't matter whether they get the ticket or not. You see them around working for the state. And that is what you see as people who are committed. Not people for every reason, they just jump out. And I thank God, this that jumping out has helped us has kept the state more united. And I want to thank all of you for the support during the last election. I don't want to say the things I will say during my validatory, uh, during my validatory speech, but to say that I thank all of you for all your support, particularly Chief Edna Alabama, who has been leading the elders' council. If you, if you know the age of Chief Alabama, you will not believe it. However, the way he jokes with us, the way he relates with us, you think that we are the same age, uh, a bracket. He's such a very good leader who knows how to organize his team. I thank the Chairman of the Lands Council, John Lord, the Peter Lee said yesterday. I don't think any administration has enjoyed the kind of support I have enjoyed from you and your council. I sincerely thank you. And of course, because he showed good support, see how God has blessed you now with a governor. So, so all your efforts did not go in vain. So I thank you so much. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Your Excellencies, may I ask at this juncture that we rise up for the national term of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Shall we rise for the national term, Your Excellencies? Thank you so much.
ask that we remain standing as their excellencies take the leave of the hall. Shall we remain standing as His Excellency, the excellencies? Shall we? His Excellency, the former River State Governor, will be leading, and his wife, as well as His Excellency, the River State Governor, and his wife, the Governor elects, the Deputy Governor of River State, and the Deputy Governor elects will be leading. May I ask that we remain standing as His Excellency, former Governor Peter Odili and his wife, Honorable Justice. Mary Odili takes leave. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you so much. Sir. Up. As they count here to the inauguration of President elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu as Nigeria's 16th president continues, more and more world leaders are showing solidarity with him in recognition of his well deserved win. The United States, United Kingdom, China, Ukraine, France, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Cuba, Nicaragua, Namibia, and a host of others have already said.